In part one, we saw how to create a string and get back characters. But what if we'd like to extract a whole word as a single string? There's another operation that lets us do just that. Here's our string s to pull out a range of characters we call substring. It takes two arguments, the start and the end of the substring we want. So let's see how this would work. When I call a substring with four and nine, it says start at position four and work your way up to position nine, but stop just before you hit nine. So for this variable s, here's blueberry pie, I'll number the characters. So B is character zero, L is one, U is two, E is three, and so forth. And then when we get up to the capital P, that's slot 10. I'll just start numbering again with zero. When we hand substring the numbers four and nine, we get back all the characters beginning at four and ending just before nine. That's a new string. And the string is Barry, because those are the characters starting at four, ending just before nine. Let's take a look at another example. Suppose I ask for the substring starting at 10, ending just before 13. There's the variable again. Let's number all the positions. Starting at 10 and ending just before 13 gives us these three. And so the result is the new string, pi. So now we can pull out someone's first name or last name just by grabbing a bunch of characters. But we're still missing a piece. To get someone's first name, I probably want to start at the beginning of the string and go up until the first space. So I need to find the index of the space so I can tell processing to get a substring starting from zero going up to the index of the space. So how do I find out the index of a given character? Well, there's a way to search. To find the index of some character or characters, we call index of. And notice it has that capital O in the middle there's that camel case again because index of is really two words that are smashed together. Index of takes a string, not a character, because it can actually search for the whole substring. So here I'm going to search for BE. Index of is case sensitive. So this is looking for a lowercase b followed by a lowercase e. Here's our variable s from before. And again, I'll number the characters. But remember, this is not an array, and these are not array indices. We don't treat a string as an array, and we don't use square brackets to get at the individual characters. As we saw in part one, we use char at to get an individual character. But even though a string isn't an array, we do need to refer to the various characters in the string by number, so that the string routines know where to look to do their work. Returning to our search, processing looks through the string s for a lowercase b, immediately followed by a lowercase e. And in this instance, it finds them starting at position 4, because that's where the substring begins. So when we call s.index of with the string be, we get back the value 4. Normally, index of starts searching at the very beginning. Here it would be the capital B. But suppose you wanted to find all of the e's. If you called index of double quote e double quote, you would get back three. If you then called it again, you would still get back three because every time you run index of, it starts at the beginning. So index of takes an optional second argument. Here I'm showing that second argument with the value four. That tells index of where to begin searching. So here's our variable. We're going to start searching at four. That's the lowercase b in blueberry and look for an e. And so it finds one in position five. So the result of this little substring search is five. So great, now we can find the location of characters in a string and we can pull out characters and we can pull out substrings. There's really one more big thing to cover and that's testing for equality. Suppose someone types in their first name and you want to test to see if their first name is something special. You might try to compare the strings with something like this. I'm creating a Boolean variable called same string, and its value is the result of s1 equals equals s2. This is a perfectly reasonable thing to type. This makes perfect sense, and unfortunately, it's wrong. For technical reasons, this is not the right way to test for strings. It will work sometimes, 
but it will also fail sometimes. And so if you get in the habit of testing with the double equals, you're asking for trouble because sometimes you'll get away with it and sometimes you won't. And the reasons for that are technical and we don't need to get into them. I'll show you the right way. And as long as you do it this way, you never have a problem. To test if two strings are equal, you call the operation equals. So here I'm taking the string S1 and I'm calling the operation equals and I'm comparing it against S2. If they are the same, and again, the case matters, I get back true. If they're not, I would get back false. So for example, if I ask someone to type in their favorite fruit and I want to see if it's a cherry, I might type something like this. S1 dot equals double quote cherry double quote. If the contents of S1 are exactly equal to capital C, H-E-R-R-Y, I get back true. Well, that's just about everything. There are a few other little utilities that you should be aware of because they can come in handy. The trim utility is very nice. If you have a string that begins or ends with white space, that's spaces or tabs or new line characters, and you call trim and it takes no arguments, Trim just drops the white space at the beginning and end of your string, giving you back just what's inside. It only trims the space at the beginning and the end and not what's inside. So if the string has spaces embedded and you call trim, the result has the embedded spaces. It just knocks away the white space at the beginning and the end. So that's handy. Another handy utility is for changing the case of a string. If I have this string, which is a mix of upper and lowercase characters, and I call to uppercase, and again, notice that the U and the C are capitalized because this is a camel case call. Well, you'll never guess what happens. <laughs> what happens is we get back a new string that's all in uppercase. If I call to lowercase, again, you'll never guess what happens. It all comes back in lowercase. Those are the primary things we do with strings. So let's recap. We have a bunch of different kinds of operations. First, we have length. By naming the string followed by a dot, followed by the operation length with no arguments, we get back the number of characters in the string. If we want to get back something within the string, we can either get a single character by calling char at, or we can get back a substring, which gives us back a new string by calling substring with two arguments. If we want to find a substring within a string, we call index of and hand it a string and we get back the first occurrence of that string. If we give this an optional second argument, that tells processing where to start searching. And then finally, we saw some nice utilities. The most important one is equals. This is the way we test to see if two strings are the same. And then we have a couple of handy things. Trim gets rid of the white space at the beginning and the end and to uppercase and to lowercase convert the string to all uppercase or all lowercase. This summarizes pretty much everything you need to know to use strings in your code.